So let us see how we are going to treat some of the non-idealities in a plug flow reactor. PFR. PFR. Uh, the plug flow reactors, as we have been discussing, were ideal reactors where fluid elements did not mix neither with the fluid element before nor after. So our fluid element remained intact as if it were a ping pong ball, non-interacting ping pong ball, until it uh, left the reactor. However, in real situations, molecules can diffuse forward or backward, depending upon the relative molecular motion with respect to the fluid velocity. So we might have gradients in either directions. For example, the reactant A in an A goes to B type of a reactor. The reactant A, as the reaction proceeds, is going to be depleted towards the end of this reactor. And A molecules may rush to fill uh, the chemical potential uh, depleted because of the conversion towards the end of the reactor. On the other hand, there is no B in the initial part of the reactor, and B molecules, depending upon their relative average velocity in the domain uh, with respect to the bulk velocity, they might diffuse back to the inlet of the reactor. So, in order to take this into account, we are going to write the reaction diffusion equation. Uh, under steady state conditions, the plug flow reactor design equation was of the following structure. DCA over D tau was equal to R sub A. We have taken care of the volume by bringing it to here and leaving this equation uh, not in terms of a function of volume or a function of position, but in, as a function of space-time. Now let's take this one and make it a function of position, let's indicate that this is the z direction. We still have uniform concentrations in our direction, and we are not going to take that dimension into consideration for the first analysis. So we are going to have a linear velocity of u in the z direction. So we are going to have, we are going to rewrite this as u times dCA over dz. To be equal to RA, let's just have a first order reaction here for the sake of simplicity in the mathematics. But then our fluid, our molecules, are rushing away from our control volume because of the diffusion. D A C times D square C A times D Z square. So this is the reaction diffusion equation. This d is the axial dispersion coefficient. Now let's rearrange this equation. D square, C 
CA over TZ square minus U over I divided the whole equation with the axial dispersion coefficient times dCA over dZ plus K times CA is equal to zero K over dAZ. So in a domain where the reactants disappear through the reaction, the minus sign, the reactants also dissipate through axial dispersion by diffusion. The side of the equation is rearranged by defining tau as z over u axial position, axial linear velocity. When we rearrange this equation, we have uh, the following differential equation. d squared ca over dz squared. I divided both sides of this equation by th the axial dispersion coefficient and moved uh, the u term to this side of the equation. Minus u over daz, dca over dz, minus k ca over DAC. Now we are going to use a, a non-dimensional position uh, in order to have a, a general derivation. I'm going to define a non-dimensional position uh, variable as z over L. So the uh, result of the non-dimensionalization will uh, look like this. d squared ca over the z square minus u l over d a z times d c a over d c minus k l square over d a z times c a to be equal to zero. Now there are two important implications in this semi-non-dimensionalized equation, we have two non-dimensionless -dimension numbers. One is the Pekla number and the other is the Demkeuler number of the second kind. So the Demkeuler number of the first kind was tau k, if you remember. Now we have a second kind. K L square over D square. And then we have a new dimensionless number which is u l over d a z and this is the Pekla number. So we continue with the relatively cleaned up version of our derivations. Our differential equation is uh, here with a second order term representing the diffusion the first order term, rep derivative term representing advection, 
and the reaction kinetic term under steady state conditions. Now we have to establish two different boundary conditions for the second order differential equation. We need two boundary conditions. We're going to write those boundary conditions, one at z is equal to zero and the other one at z is equal to l. So further cleaned up version of the uh, species mole balance equation subject to an axial dispersion effect with Dankwart's boundary conditions are presented on the screen. It is going to be your homework to derive the solve this differential equation, apply the boundary conditions, and find uh, the equation that represent concentration of species A relative to the concentration of A at the inlet, or CA0. Let's write CA in here. Now I'm going to further discuss a couple of things uh, relative to the Peckla number. All right, so here, this is the Peckla number in non-dimensional form. Now, when Peckla number goes to infinity, means that diffusivity is going to zero, or axial dispersion coefficient is approaching to zero. When the axial dispersion coefficient is approaching to zero, this term drops out from the initial non-dimensional uh, form. You can deduce that the first term, this term, disappears. And as a result, our balance equation takes the following form. U dCA over dZ minus K times CA to be equal to zero. And notice that this is the design equation of a plug flow reactor. In the other extreme, Pekla number goes to zero. Let's write it here. When Pekla number goes to zero, in other words, our Linear velocity in the domain is zero, so this term disappears. That our differential equation takes the form d square ca daz dz square minus k times ca to be equal to zero. And this expression eventually leads to the design equation of a CSTR. All right? because our dependence on a z disappears, we integrate this twice to arrive at v0, ca0 minus v0, ca divided by minus r sub a is equal to V.